In this screen capture video, I'm going to talk to you about how to summarize variables with frequency distribution tables and charts. We've talked about measures of central tendency. Measures of central tendency give you a very simple summary of a variable, but sometimes you really want more than that. You want a sense of, in general, what something's like. For example, here, if you want to know what top celebrities are paid, you might not want to know just one number. You want to know, in general, what, what's the distribution of numbers looks like. Um, so the very first thing we want to do is tell Excel that this is a data table. I've already downloaded this list of uh, top 100 celebrities. And the first thing I do is I click anywhere here, clicking only on one cell. Remember, you don't want to do two cells at a time or a whole column. If I did a whole column and press Control-T, now just this one column becomes our data, and that's not what we want. We want to be able to press the entire, get the entire thing as our data table. Note again that the addresses here of the table are stated. A1 is the cell in the upper leftmost corner of the data, and J101 is at the bottom right corner. Okay, so go and do that again. Click anywhere on the in the data. Press Control T. Also, you should make sure that that check mark is in the box there for my table as headers because these are your headers here. So I want to press Control T, create the data table and the color coordinated thing here indicates that Excel is recognized as a, as a data table now. I can change the table name up at the top here to celebs. Keep in mind that you should be able to see table tools at the top. The screen capture is not showing that, but let me just modify that slightly. You can see the table tools at the very top. If I click outside the data table, the table tools menu goes away. But I can click back inside and then it comes back. Like that. And so when I'm inside um, the table and I see the table tools menu, there's something called summarize with pivot table. This is a um, feature we're going to be using the rest of the semester. Uh, you can do a lot of things summarizing data, reducing data with it. So if I click on summarize with pivot table, Excel asked me whether I want to create a pivot table with the table uh, celebs, and it's asking me, uh, do I want a new worksheet? Basically, just pressed OK. I'm taken to a new worksheet here, and this is the pivot table format. You see the basic template here, and then on the right-hand side, there's a pivot table field list. The pivot table field list has the names of all the variables, and then there's four boxes below. And basically, pivot table is this powerful feature that allows you to summarize data, uh, different variables, by dragging and drop, dropping them into one of these four boxes. We're doing what's called univariate statistics. And univariate statistics are statistics with just one variable. We're going to move on to two a little bit later on. But also notice that when I'm not clicking on, when the cursor is not within this box here, that pivot table stuff goes away. But if I just click back in it, I can see the field ta field list. Click in this area to choose the field, li uh, field list. And in order to create a frequency distribution, we take the variable we're interested in, which is pay, grab it, drop it in the row labels, drag it, and drop it again into the values box. Now, note that the statistic being reported here is sum, which is not what we want. We want to change it to count. There are two ways to do that. One way is to click on one of these numbers inside this column here, sum of pay. Right click, summarize values by count. So now that gives me the number of celebrities with that particular pay. So there's one celebrity with six and a half million, 
one with seven and a half, one with eight and a half, etc. There's three with twelve. Okay, and this is then the beginnings of a frequency distribution table where it gives you for each number gives you the number of celebrities in each. So there's seven, for example, celebrities that have that make twenty million. And if you could go and check that in the uh, data itself, and you'd see that there were seven celebrities making exactly twenty million dollars. The problem with this table is it's way too long and unwieldy, so we want to condense it further. And since this is an interval variable, we can put this into groups. And I can do that simply by clicking on any one of these numbers. Right click, select group. It's automatically going to detect the minimum, 6.5, and the maximum, 315, which was uh, Oprah Winfrey's salary. I'm going to do it in this case by 10, 10 million. Okay, now it groups it in salaries of 10 million, 6.5 to 16.5, 16.5 to 26.5, etc. So now I see that there are 14 celebrities making between 6.5 and 16.5 and million, 19 making between 16.5 and, and 26.5, and etc. And there's only one at this very high end, that's Oprah Winfrey. Once you have this table, it's very easy to create a chart from it. And it's often useful to create a chart because this table, um, generally charts are better than tables if they can provide you with more information more quickly and um, give you a more powerful sense of what's going on. Notice that whenever I'm clicking anywhere on this table, there's something called pivot table tools at the top. If I click outside, that goes away. If I click back inside, it comes back. If I can click on that, pivot table tools and I see something called pivot chart. This is one of the powerful features of Excel that allows you to just create a chart from a table very quickly. And click on pivot chart. I'm going to use the simplest column chart to create what's called a histogram or a frequency distribution chart. Then I press OK and that chart appears right here. Now this chart is sort of small and I want it to be I want it to be bigger and easier to see, so what I can do is I can right click it and move it to a new sheet that I'm going to call Histogram of Pay. Now it's in a new sheet called Histogram of Pay. Same workbook, but different sheet. You can see that down here. I still have my, my data set here my pivot table here and now my histogram here. Histogram, all histogram is is just expressing the frequency distribution of a variable, namely the numbers that would be in this table here, but it's doing that in bar chart form. So it shows us that 14 celebrities were making between six and a half and sixteen and a half million, etc. The next thing we want to do is label this chart in a descriptive way. Charts should be labeled so that they're pretty self-explanatory. When people are reading an article on the newspaper and they, there's a chart there, they want to be able to look at the chart and know exactly what's going on and not have to read any of the text. So I'm going to change this frequency distribution of earnings among the top 100 celebrities say 2011. Also it's very important to indicate the source of the data in the chart like this. Notice there's a little legend here which doesn't tell us anything. We want to delete that. Click on it and delete. Those are sometimes useful but not in this case. Now we should get a general sense of the frequency distribution of this variable. What does this tell us? This tells us that looks like there's a very long tail here. There's a small number of people making a lot of money. Of course, they're all making a lot of money, but there's some making a particularly large amount of money. And what we would say is we could describe this, this chart as skewed to the right or positively skewed because the right tail is longer than the left tail. If the chart was reversed, then we would we would say it would be left skewed, and I'm going to 
talk about that in a second. But this generally gives you a sense of the way the incomes are distributed. So there's more, most of the incomes are within this range here from about 16 and a half, 56 and a half million. And then there's a small group making over 100 million like that. Now, that brings me to think about what, how do you describe these kinds of charts? Well, when you think of a histogram, the way a variable is distributed, you can think about it, first of all, as whether it's symmetrical. Symmetrical distribution, which might look like And to get another whiteboard software that actually works here. So if we think about frequency distributions or histograms, and think about it first in terms of symmetry. Um, if I draw a line like this, but the distributions, I should make it a little bit symmetrical, like this. This distribution is relatively symmetrical. On the other hand, you can think of asymmetrical distributions like this, the very long right-hand tail. This is called, basically, this is positively skewed, okay, or rightward skewed. On the other hand, if the distribution is like this, this would be leftward skewed, which means there's a long left-hand tail. Most income distributions are something like this, with a longer left-hand tail than a right-hand tail. We have most people in the middle and a very s small group of people making a lot of money at the top. You can think that this is not just a technical kind of thing. It actually tells you something about society or the group of people you're talking about. A society like this where there's a small group of people making a lot of money is going to be different than a society where, say, most people make about the same amount, which would look something like this. Or a society like this would tell you that there's a small group, a small but sizable group at the higher end and a larger group at the bottom end and not much of a middle class. Instead, in this country we have, again, something that looks more like this, the larger middle class, but also a growing group of people at the top making a lot of money. And so the idea here is to connect the statistics or data descriptions with sociological concepts like inequality, and we'll talk about that more later.